Hello, and welcome to a new episode of How Many, the only podcast on the internet that counts. I am one of your hosts, Jesse Jackson. Today we have Junior, Bob, Scott Matula. I'm the <laughs> very Yes, we do, and we are Scottless. Now, we don't know for how long. He may make a surprise, shocking appearance at some point in the middle of the podcast. <laughs> do we need the ticket drop with the opening and the closing of the door to the studio? <laughs> yeah, like call we'll to Maxwell. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, let leave. me play his intro music. <laughs> Uh, so, you know, we're all about being timely here. You can count on a new episode every week from us. That was recorded fail. like seven months ago. Yes. So in that spirit, like, are the Cowboys ever going to get rid of Jason Garrett? <laughs> <laughs> I predict not only will they get rid of him, but they will hire former Packer coach Mike McCarthy. You heard it here first. Wow. Well, yeah. Mike's first opinion. It shocks you. It shocks you. <laughs> yes, as we record this, this is February 8th. Uh, it is the Saturday after the Super Bowl. And we did want to talk a few minutes about the Cowboys. So the less said about our last season, better. Uh, very disappointing season all the way around. I actually don't think of it that way. I feel this may have been the most productive season in the, the last 10 years because it actually brought about change that was probably warranted five years ago. That's a good way. So we finally it. got around more more. to doing the one thing that would move this franchise forward. Five years too late, but now we can actually turn the page and look forward to a brighter future. If if Garrett was coming back next season, I would have the same hopelessness that I felt for the last no ten years. Fear. So, I think this is a good thing for us. I actually was planning on offing myself if they didn't fire me. Dang it! <laughs> <laughs> Are you going to put a mohawk on it? Well, I might have put a mohawk on it and then put a bullet in it. <laughs> <laughs> so, Bob, what are your thoughts? I like Junior's take because, other than that, you can't really look at the season as anything but just a crushing disappointment. But he's right. I mean, it's one of those things where you finally got what you've been needing for a long time. Because up to now, 8-8 eight and eight wasn't bad enough for Jerry to take action. And, and Steven, and they, they and it's finally... still it still actually bucked the trend because we didn't have a losing season, and yet we were forced. Our hand was forced to do something about it. I thought for sure Jerry was just going to stay stay the course. It's quite possible that Steven put Jerry in a headlock. You know, I, I get your take on it. It just seems like another wasted season. And yes, already it's a successful off season I agree. because we've changed. But just when I look at football season, you just get. The 16 games. Well, and, just, and, and it just it was it was a wasted opportunity because the, yes. the a- NFC East has never been worse. No. The NFC as a whole, there weren't really any unbeatable, transcendent. I mean, San Francisco was very good. There were a couple other good teams, but there was there for the taking. You know, it wasn't like last year where the Rams were a juggernaut. It's always or, there for the taking, though. Yeah, and, I mean, and, uh, that just is the way it is. You look at the Cowboys' wins in the 90s, and those were against stacked NFC Easts. So it, it's, yeah. it's, yeah. that makes no difference. What Chris and I, when we were watching the NFC Championship game, he just looked over to me and said, you know, we're not, we're not anywhere close to the 49ers. <laughs> but I do think that if things click, yeah. we can be competitive. It's the I, defense. See, I, I, dis, I, I disagree yeah. with that because I think we are. Yeah. I think the margin of error between 8-8 eight and eight teams and 12-4 and four teams in the NFL period, but probably specifically this year in the NFC, is just not that great. You know, you, you watch the games and you'll watch teams that finished 8-8 eight and eight beating teams that finished 10-6 and six or 12-4 and four or whatever, yeah. and you know it's just little things. And for us, to be as incredibly poorly coached as we were, or maybe as incredibly mediocre coached as we were, to be that and to still end up eight and eight with a realistic shot at nine and seven or ten and six and you have to think there's no way you get there 
without just having straight up talent on the field. Bumbled your way to almost making the playoffs in spite of the fact that you get zero help from your coaching staff. I mean, just a different kicker alone, we were talking about this earlier, yeah. could have put us in the playoffs yeah, this, very easily. This year, they, they were terrible in one-score games. They were like, what, 1-6, in 1-7. in seven. Last year, they couldn't win. They couldn't lose a one-score game. This year, they couldn't win one. So a lot of that's kicking, a lot of that's coaching. It, now, I, for one, will be sad not to see Maher line up anymore because I was really <laughs> enjoying those 70-yard tries. <laughs> Maher... Nailing it from 63. That is one bad Maher What? 63? Maher, Maher, Talking about Anytime we cross midfield, whoever it was, right. was it Jake? I can't remember who was on the ticket that said he was basically happy Gilmore. That he had, he he had a one trick; he could just hit it really far, and that was it. You know. So he was kicking field goals with a hockey hockey stick. stick yeah. yeah. <laughs> it does seem like that one change happening sooner would have just might have saved Garrett's job, which I guess we we're glad they didn't make the right, change. Right. But I think it's a symptom. And a great example of why he needed to go. No one to hold him, no one to fold him is a cliche. But the reality is, what is it the great branch Ricky said? Better to cut a player too soon than too, too late. Long. Now, Jerry didn't do that. Yeah. But at least yeah. eventually. And even the Garrett firing took way longer yeah. than it should have. I wanted to bring that up. I don't read too much into that, though. They knew what they were doing, both with the firing and the hiring. They knew all along what they were going to do. They really only interviewed one guy. They knew who that guy was. And after you hear them talk about it after the fact, they basically said, over the years, we've gotten to know Mike McCarthy really well. And even Jason Garrett recommended him for the job. So the media speculation that Garrett was in there begging for his job <laughs> and all that stuff, that may or may not have any truth to it whatsoever. But it's irrelevant because it's not like they missed out on Ron Rivera and maybe they would have been interested. They knew what they wanted and they got what they wanted. It right. was odd that it was a two-week process, another process that falls in the Garrett era. Well, we lost the game, but you have to understand that this is a process. It's a process yes. that we go through. We're in the process of going 6-10 and 10 this year, okay? <laughs> so you've got to be patient. Processes take time. It took them so long to make a definitive decision, come out in the media and say he's gone. But it does make me think that there were, may have even been talks ahead of Garrett being gone with McCarthy since they moved I mean, on it so that's, fast. That's the one thing. McCarthy was available immediately because he wasn't coaching anywhere. So they could have, if they knew that was the guy they wanted, they didn't need to wait as long as they did. Now, but, was yeah. it the football barn that sold them on this, on this <laughs> the whole Peter thing? The Peter King. Well, <laughs> hanging no, out with and they had to do the Rooney rule. So they had to bring oh, yeah. in Marvin Lewis. Yeah. Before we move on to our new coach, I wanted to just take on Garrett's legacy. From my perspective, the legacy is going to be and this is so sad, it's a process. <laughs> because one of the things that, as you guys know, uh, I was in the job hunt for the last month. And, you know, I can't tell you how often Chris and Linda and I, like, when you get an email back saying, well, we looked at your resume, thank you anyway. We go, well, you know, it's a process. <laughs> you know, we got to do things well. We have to we have a good day well. Get to stack. 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 All in, three phases. In our house, I think that will be the long-term shtick that will live on forever. Any serious legacy or anything you guys want to share about that? Well, when we did the best coaches in DFW history, I'm pretty sure we were all a consensus no on whether he was a good coach in the Cowboys era. I'm always going to see him as the guy that wasted Romo's career, basically. Yeah. Well, Romo, he started wasting Dax. Yeah, he's already got a head start on wasting Dax. Romo could have been a great quarterback under different circumstances. He was good as it was, yep. but he could have been yes. great under different circumstances. Now, how much better is he if he's not having to correct bad calls and fix things on the field that are getting messed up on the sideline? Yeah. Yeah. That for me, the, the Garrett will always be the guy I think he wasted or had the opportunity with two full cores. He had a, an entire team that was built to win, that did win somewhat. You know, we had a 13-3 season and mm -hmm. that kind of stuff. But you've got Romo, you've got Dez, you've got a good offensive line. DeMarcus you've Ware. got DeMarcus Ware. Jason you've Witten. Got, you've got Jason Witten in his prime. You've got all this talent, and you can't get it done. And somehow you survived that. 
and you get to the point where you've got Tyron Smith and Zeke and Dak and Cooper and still have Witten and all the Demarcus Lawrence. You, you got all this talent, and every single year, the players have changed. All of the assistant coaches have changed. He's brought in his own guys to run the offense, to run the defense. He got everything that he wanted. And so that's one of the things when people say, well, Jerry's always, he got everything he wanted. And he was eight and eight, eight and eight, eight and eight, nine and seven, seven and nine, 12 and four, four and 12. He is the most mediocre coach in the history of 10 year coaches. It's, it's embarrassing that he made it 10 years as a Cowboys fan. Do you think he'll do well as the offensive coordinator for the Giants? He's not even the offensive coordinator for the Giants. Okay. The wide receiver coach that they hired as the head coach over him from the Patriots is going to run that Patriots system. I think he's there because he was a head coach in the NFL, and he can help the wide receiver coach adjust. I think that's why he's there. Okay. So name only, title no, it's not only. Just no, no. Right. It's, it's the fact that he's been a head coach in the league, so he can make sure that, that the guy that's taken over that's never been a head coach in the NFL doesn't hit any bumps from an administrative Structural, structure standpoint. Yeah. Which I think is a good hire. Yeah, from that you know, perspective. Because we were talking about for the long time, not to overspeak you, but when Jerry first was general manager, I think the complaint, we wish you'd hired someone that knew a little bit about the ins and sure. outs of the NFL to help you. At this point, Jerry's been doing it long enough. Yeah, that, sure. Yeah, and, 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 and to speak to that too, even on the Cowboys staff, we're all very happy that there are so many former head coaches that are now assistants on the Cowboys staff. None of them were successful head coaches, right? but we're really happy that somebody that rose to that level is now an assistant on our staff. From that perspective, I get it, but I guess, and this may be just me personally, but probably not, my hatred for Garrett runs so deep (laughs) that I can't see that as anything but a failure for them. I think if anything, if he learns anything from Garrett after having been working with Bill Belichick, he's moving back. Maybe he'll be learning what not to do. That, maybe that's what he's I there mean, for. We, can all, we better go out and get a, a good nose tackle this year and, and amp up that defensive line because you can bet you're going to see Saquon Barkley get 30 carries a game. Media will have a field day, especially this coming season, if we happen to lose one of those Giants games. Yeah, that will sure. be they'll, they'll, insanity. Oh, sure. Well, there'll right. be lots of shots of Garrett on the sideline yes. in his Giants With his gear. utility belt. I, wonder yeah. if he gets to I, be- I don't think he gets to keep the utility belt. <laughs> you know, that was a coordinator. So, Gary, you probably can speak of this more than we do, but I went to Memphis for a week. Put that on the bracket. <laughs> and um, we, we got into an Uber, and the guy had cowboy mats on his car. And so Linda's like, ah, oh, cowboy fan. Yeah, yeah. So I go, oh, are you excited about McCartney? Doesn't matter. As long as we have Jerry as an owner, <laughs> nothing is going to change. So one, it always cracks me up, the amount of cowboy fans that are out when you travel. You always run into someone. We were B.B. King's uh, restaurant, bar, and they had a blues band playing. And one of them, the bass player, huge cowboy fan. He says, I'm still loving my cowboys. You know, and somebody else was a Chiefs fan or... 49ers fan everything back and forth. First off, I just think that's great that there's so many Cowboy fans, but do we think this hire of someone of this caliber is enough to make a difference? It should be. I mean, you've got a proven winning coach. He's gone to a Super Bowl. He's won a Super Bowl. Got a lot of time in the league. It it didn't end well in Green Bay, but in my opinion... He got he got sabotaged by Rodgers. That was I, I think it's a, it's not a sexy hire personality wise. He's he's not a huge uh, uptick over Garrett. He's kind of a, a generic guy, but he's he knows what he's doing. He's got proven success, and I think the biggest key is going to be to see how he works with some of the existing. Like you know, he's keeping Kellen Moore, and that all indications are he really likes Kellen Moore. He wanted to, he he said he would have hired him if he had a job somewhere else. It'll be interesting to see how that dynamic works. Is it McCarthy going to really kind of dictate to Kellen Moore how he wants the offense to run, or is he going to? be open to the input. But I think it's a good hire. I Do you like think it. that was lip service, him saying that he would hire Kellen Moore I even like if to he think was not. just out on the street? No, I, I like to think. I'm I with mean, Bob. I, we're, at least from my perspective, we're tainted because Kellen Moore, what, they just, they hired a backup quarterback? I mean, what's, Scott, what's this guy done? And then 
you know, we get that three games, like, oh, this is amazing, and then just mediocrity. I agree with Bob. You've got to take him for his word. There is no reason to lie. He was able to change everyone on the Yeah, that the that, that was the thing that stood, that stood out to me, is that McCarthy picked the whole rest of the staff. So the only thing I could think of, to your point, is if Jerry says, look, I'll let you uh, – Go ahead and pick the whole staff, but you got to keep my boy here, old Buck Teeth McGee here. Is that your fake, Jerry? I mean, it's my <laughs> triple, triple, quadruple fake. Half I like it. Jerry, I like but, it. Uh, Gary, yeah, no. What do you think? Kind of along the lines of Bob. I know it's not a sexy hire. I even said during the interview process that if McCarthy was what they chose, I wasn't going to be upset about it because it's a good football coach. I wanted them to really seriously make a play at somebody like a Belichick or something like that. But one of the names that I always came up with was. Sean Payton, like, why can't we go get Sean Payton? I know he just signed the contract extension, but it's been a number of years where they probably could have made some sort of a play, even if it took draft picks or something like that, to get him, and that would have been my my choice. When they actually made the hire with McCarthy, there were a couple of people that tweeted out some stuff that I fully was not aware of, but they put all of their coaching accolades side by side. McCarthy and Sean Payton, they're the same guy. They have essentially the exact same record. They've won the same number of division titles. They've won the same number of Super Bowls. They've made the same number of NFC title game appearances. They're the same guy. It's just that one of them has the big personality. And has Sean Payton. previous ties to the Cowboys, yeah, too. But yeah, but his previous ties with the Cowboys aren't the reason why he's revered around the league. No, no. Just, you know, he can work with Jerry. Yeah, well, I, I see. I think that that's such an overrated aspect to this because I've heard it said by a couple of different people and I listen to guys like, you know, Broadus whenever you do talking Cowboys uh, back when he was with Cowboys.com you hear him talk about when he was in the building and the way that the coaches interact with the front office guys like Jerry and it what it really boils down to is they get what they take. Parcells got whatever he wanted because he's Bill Parcells. Jimmy got what he wanted because he's Jimmy. Those are alphas. They walk in the room, they say, I have to have that, and they get that. Then you get guys like, whether it was Campo or whoever, Wade, and they come in there, and they're happy to be there. So it's like, hey, these guys that you gave us, they're really good. No, they're, they're really not. But And you should be mad about that, and you should be demanding better or going and finding better and telling them that's what I want. You get what you take. Those guys were happy to be there. They weren't going to come in there and start rocking the boat and saying, fire that guy, I'm going to hire somebody different. They weren't going to make those kinds of changes. I think McCarthy will. I, I think he already has. I mean, if we talk about Kellen Moore getting kept as the offensive coordinator and we can debate whether or not that was Jerry mandated or even Jerry requested, but I think everybody also kind of thought we should be keeping Kitna and Colombo. Where are they at? They're yep. gone because that's not who McCarthy wanted. Yeah, Colombo was kind of shocking that they did But didn't then he turned him. around and kept Nussmeyer and moved him over quarterback coach, which, by the way, for the six people that are going to listen to this, <laughs> if I have to hear one more person say, why are they making the tight ends coach the quarterback coach? For God's sake, Google that man's name. I know it's spelled funny. Yeah. <laughs> he spent his entire career as a quarterback. Yeah. Then as a quarterback coach and an offensive coordinator for 15 years, and then we made him the tight end coach for one year. He's not a tight ends coach. The, co- the question should have been, why are we making this quarterback That's guy a tight exactly. ends yeah. coach? <laughs> so, so do you think they're better off having McCarthy, who's had the previous head coaching experience, over one of the hot shot coordinators like Roman or Sala? Do you think- I mean, crap shoot either way. Or the college guy. Yeah. That's what I was or the thinking. College guy. They may go after a Lincoln Riley or somebody like that. I was not upset with the hire. I thought it was a competent hire that he would be a solid coach. It was nobody's top pick. No. He, you know, like oh, he, he kind of reminds me. He makes me think of a competent version of Wade. Because uh, he yeah. has a Wade-ish personality. But he seems like he knows a little bit more about how to manage a team than I think Wade probably oh. did. He just Surprise, didn't. I'm here. <laughs> Surprise, I'm here. <laughs> so, uh, so I'm not. And these are good clutches, Jerry. I don't think this is unusual. I mean, I'm not this wild take. But I really believe also that his year off really helped him. He took it seriously. I mean, all, all of us prep. who have lost jobs. Yeah. Uh, looking at Bob and me. And, yeah. <laughs> you know, you review what you did well and what you would do over. Did well. And to come by. Well. So I think that year of self-awareness is going to make him a stronger coach. Well, I think his biggest problem in Green Bay was he just rubbed the quarterback the wrong way. So 
what could he have done differently? <laughs> the quarterback's family <laughs> rubs the quarterback the wrong way. I mean, that's yeah. a good indication. Olivia Munn yeah. rubs the quarterback the wrong way. <laughs> well, for a while, the right way. I was going to say. <laughs> so um, it, it seemed like it was more of a personality clash for yeah. him in Green Bay. So as long as he can uh, get along with Dak for as long as Dak is here, which we assume will yeah. be a long time, hopefully. Yeah, it doesn't seem like anybody doesn't get along with Dak. Then from an X's and O's standpoint, I haven't heard anybody have an issue with his actual game plans, his play calling, now the Packer game fans, management. The Packer fans kind of turned on him. They well, they made it seem like he had, he was basically Garrett up there. Except for the fact that fans are stupid. <laughs> yes, and if, are. You, if, you, if you don't need any more proof of that, then just go on Twitter or Facebook <laughs> and read the Cowboys comments to know fans are stupid. And they're like that everywhere. I can yeah. tell you as I travel around all yes. over the place and listen to sports radio in other places, they're dumb everywhere. <laughs> yeah, and, and, just and it's the same yeah. thing with whether you're a fan of a TV show or a comic book. You can't win. Uh, Peter David, the writer who's written just Larry's brother, anything, no, <laughs> talked about that. You know, fans want what you're not giving them, and then when you give them what you say they want, they immediately want something else. It is truly is what have you done for me lately, and. It's, it's what I think we should be doing because obviously 60-year-old white guy, you know, sitting in his cubicle, I know how to run a team. <laughs> yeah. So before we get off of the yeah. Cowboys get off, topic, whoa, whoa, whoa. Yes. <laughs> what, what do we think is going to happen with Dak? Like uh, right now he's in contract negotiations. He had already been reported he's turned down a $33 million per year deal because he wanted more money. It's possible. Easy on that. It's possible they're going to franchise him if they I, can't I, I come to an agreement. The, a lot of stuff that I've read doesn't necessarily indicate that he wants more than the 33. It's that he wants the more on the guarantees. Guaranteed, yeah. yeah. Or a shorter contract. So it could be that the number is right. It's just the percentage of how much is guaranteed. Or a number of years. Guaranteed money or number of years. So there's a, there are a lot of factors that come into play there. That I don't know that the, that the $33 million average was the sticking point. It may be one of the other things. Yeah. Now, do you feel that he warrants that kind of contract? It would make him almost the highest paid Doesn't quarterback. You've got to look at it in terms of market, not not on an individual basis. Lynn and I are going to go see the Eagles, and we got mediocre tickets for like one hundred and forty dollars each. And she's like, no! oh, "That much money? I'm like yeah. going to see it? Yeah." And that's, that's and mean. in sports, whatever seems like an overpay now is going to be a bargain before the end of the That's contract. That's true. I mean, when, when Garoppolo signed his deal, everybody gasped, and now everybody wants a quarterback for $28 million a year. Okay. But, but the truth is, has Brady ever been the highest-paid quarterback in the NFL? No. no. You know why? Because every year somebody gets a bigger deal. Right yeah. now... You've got a guy out there, you've got Russell Wilson or whoever it is that's the highest paid that's over $30 million, it's 32 33 whatever it is. You've got him out there making the most money. And maybe Dak is going to get more than that. But then immediately after that, Mahomes is going to get more than him. And yeah. Watson may even get more than him, depending on when the deal gets signed. But is Dak that, that, that quality thinks, of quarterback? Yes, he is. Nobody thinks that... Watson is better than Mahomes. And nobody thinks that, that maybe that Dak is, is better than one of these other guys. But the market just goes up, and that's just the way life works. Two years from now, we're going to watch Baker Mayfield get more money than all of them. And nobody's going to think that that makes Baker Mayfield the best quarterback in the NFL. Mm, I, mean, I don't know about that. I, yeah, he, is. he made Manziel out before then. <laughs> but before it's, it's, all, it's all about timing. Okay, it doesn't have to be yeah. him. It can be Josh Allen. It can be yeah. any of the new quarterbacks. It could be, it could be Kyler Murray. It doesn't matter. Yeah. Insert the name. Two years ago, the top quarterbacks that were drafted in, in the NFL that have been starting ever since, and the guys that are going to get drafted this year, Joe Burrow. Joe Burrow may be the first $50 million quarterback. And maybe he will be the best quarterback in the NFL by then. Or maybe he'll be like fifth or sixth best or yeah. tenth best. He's still going to make more money than everybody else that's taking snaps right now. All it, all it comes down to is either either you're a failed bit or you're not. It's not about how good you are as a quarterback. If they think they're keeping you, you're getting the yeah, best. Yeah. And, and the reality is, and, and this is going to come across as faint praise, if you have a good, competent quarterback that is valuable yep. and and i don't mean competent as can barely do it you it, it is hard to be yeah it is hard to be a quarterback and it is hard to be a leader everything we've seen that this guy listens he's coachable 
Um, he he seems to improve teammates his game. Love him. Yeah, teammates, teammates rally around him. him. I mean, he's because because Dak ultimately on those those intangibles. He is up near the top of the league in terms yeah. of leadership. Everybody on the team follows him. He's he's great. And in he's locker very room. durable. He hardly yeah, ever he's, he's hardly ever injured. He he no off the field issues even remotely close no. to anything. I mean, there's so much good about about him. You well, know, well, and 4,900 yards and 30 touchdowns is nothing to sneeze. No, at. no, exactly. And it's even more impressive when you consider he was getting no help from the sideline. Yeah, right. exactly. And, and I will say this. Before last off season, when they were talking about extending him, I felt way worse about it. After this season and him throwing for that many yards, throwing that many touchdowns, I feel better about the deal than I did a year ago. Last year, um, during the off season, it didn't really feel like he was a top tier quarterback to me. But I think he made the jump. And just feelings; these are just feelings, and I know Gary will correct me. But when the Cowboys were behind. I felt in, when Roma was there, there's a chance he's going to do an untimely pick. And, and I, that's a feeling. I'm not right. kidding. It is. It, it's yeah, just and it's because not he's reality. had some big ones. Yes. He also had the most comebacks. Exactly. Yeah. But Dak. But you can't take those kinds of chances at the end of games and not have some picks. And so, but Dak, I don't feel that way. Right. And, he, and like I said, it's just a feeling. It isn't based on facts. Well, and it just would need a bigger body of work. And right. if you think of the big games he's played in, both regular season and then the playoff games he's been in, even though they lost the playoff games, he won one, I think. He's won two. But he was really good in those games, especially yes. that Packers game. They were yeah. going to get blown out. He brought them all the way yeah. back. I mean, so he's played well when it's been a big stage. All right. Uh, okay, quick. I'm saying the Cowboys are just going to be 10-6 and six next season. <laughs> I do think You've been like, overshooting a few years. Yeah, yeah, I've been overshooting. So I'm going 10-6, and six, but they will squeak into the playoffs. I mean, a lot of it's going to be who we draft, who we pick up in free agency. I know all that just Very right now. <laughs> Put your, you're putting your money. You're in Vegas and you're making a bet. Um, I would probably go ten and six right now too, uh, but I don't know how good the rest of the division will be. I assume they're going to suck again, yeah. and it'll give us a good chance to win it. Okay. But it, it's a lot's going to depend on the off season. Gary, get your Michael Richards drop ready. Thirteen three. It shocks you. It shocks you. <laughs> it shocks you. It shocks you. <laughs> no, I can see that. The reason I say it's it's there's the rebound, right? You get a new coach. It's a little bit new offense. You'll probably have a couple of wins early because people aren't going to be quite sure what to expect from the offense or the defense, so they don't have a scouting report on you. There's a lot that goes into it, I think, just, you know, especially having not seen any offseason yet. Yeah. But the, the simple fact of the matter is, I think, position by position across the board, this team is going to be better coached than it was last year, and they, a hair's breadth away from 10-6 and six last year. Okay. Fair enough, Bob. I would be inclined to lean toward Gary's end of things if I knew the defense was going to get fixed. But that's such a big question mark at this point. So I'm going to hedge my bet and say, (laughs) I'm going to hedge my bet. Yeah, I like Nolan. It's more of the personnel and who they fill in the gaps with. But I think 11 and 5, I'm going to hedge my bets and say 11 and 5. Okay. But they'll win the division. It's just that the deep. Plus, as Spurs fans, you guys should understand every other year better than anybody. Yeah, that's yeah, true. Yeah, we had a nice run that's of true. odd year changes. And I guess the strength of schedule ought to be in our favor after going 8-8, eight and eight, right? Doesn't that help with like the... Other than the fact that everybody else does the same thing we do. Yeah. Bad teams get better, good teams get worse. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Uh, well, very good. Uh, and then, of course, we will be back with our official predictions before the start of the season, after we have a little more information. But for now, I am Jesse Jackson. You can find me on Twitter, at Jesse Jackson PFW. Uh, Bob at uh, Lukewarm Tallboy on Twitter. Funny, Funny story. story. Uh, Gary Grant at Travel underscore Cowboy on Twitter. And Junior, Mexican underscore Junior. You can leave us a message also on our YouTube channel, our Facebook page, lots of different ways to get a hold of us. Uh, email how many podcasts at gmail.com. Good. Well, for now, uh, let's uh, go Cowboys. Mm-hmm.